Hi guys, welcome. If you're new here, my name's Nikki. I'm a beekeeper and I make beekeeping videos. If that's something you like watching, then hit the subscribe button. If you're one of my returning subscribers, thank you so much for coming back and listening to what I have to say. I really appreciate it. I did a video a couple months ago showing you how I make my pollen patties, so I thought I would do another video and show you how I make my own pollen substitute. So there are lots of variations of pollen substitute recipes online, so I'll just go over what I like to use in mine, and I've separated these ingredients out by ingredients that I think you should absolutely use in the substitute, and a couple ingredients that are not necessary, but I like to add mine in, and you're free to do that if you'd like as well. The first and the main ingredient is going to be soy flour. This is probably the hardest um, of the ingredients for me to find. I can never find this at like local grocery stores. I do order it online. I will link um, some places or some products in the description below where you can find this online. Um, it'd be great if you could find it locally. I just don't have that option here. I do get a lot of questions about why specifically soy flour. Soy flour is extremely high in protein and has a really good mix of amino acids which makes it a great choice for your pollen substitute. I also get asked a lot if you can substitute this out for regular white flour or whole wheat flour and I'm only showing you what I use. I never tell other beekeepers what they should or shouldn't do but they just those flowers just don't have the same protein content as the soy flour does. I do from time to time get some beekeepers who will tell me that they use wheat or white flour and they, the bees are very attracted to it and they will collect it and I always just remind people that in times when food sources are scarce for your bees, bees will collect a lot of stuff. They'll collect dirt and dust and sand and dust off of animal feed um, when there's no pollen sources available to them. So just because they collect it doesn't mean it's a good nutritional substitute for the bees. So just always keep that in mind. The next ingredient that I have is non-fat dry milk. This is, you can pretty much find this at any grocery store and it's pretty inexpensive. The other um, required ingredient, in my opinion, to your pollen substitute is brewer's yeast. This is another one that can be difficult to find. Brewer's yeast is used in making alcohol, so it's also sometimes not really readily available. And a lot of people will ask if you can just use regular yeast, like for bread making. And I would not recommend doing that. So brewer's yeast is extremely high in B vitamins, iron, protein, selenium. So the nutritional components of your brewer's yeast are gonna be vastly different than your traditional baking yeast. Now, um, this yeast, if you aren't a parent or haven't um, breastfed before, you may not know this. This is kind of a tip for anybody who hasn't, but brewer's yeast is used by people who lactate or breastfeed as a supplement to increase milk production. So you can find brewer's yeast pretty easily in your grocery store, your supermarket, in the baby section. And it's been years and years since I've needed to use it for that purpose. So just to kind of test out and see if I could find it, I did pick this up from my local grocery store just a couple days ago. This would be a really good option if you are just making a smaller quantity of your pollen substitute or you only have a couple hives. If you are making big batches of this or you have a lot of hives, I'd not recommend purchasing it this way. This was a pound of the brewer's yeast for about $10. So not the most cost effective, but certainly a good option. So that's just a little tip on if you're having trouble find, finding the brewer's yeast where you could possibly find it in your local grocery store. The optional items that I like to add into mine is vitamin C. It's thought that vitamin C helps attract the bees to the pollen substitute. You just purchase regular vitamin C tablets that are used for us humans and crush them up into a fine powder. And then I add, um, this is vital wheat gluten. So we talked about the wheat flour not being high enough in protein to really use or not being comparable to the soy flour. 
the vital wheat gluten has been processed to pull everything except the gluten out and it is incredibly high in protein so i do add some of this to my pollen substitute i started doing this maybe a year or two ago um and i've had good success and the bees still take it so this is not necessary but i like that added insurance of making sure they're getting enough protein so i do add this to my substitute now I will list all of the measurements down in the description as well, but we'll go over them pretty quickly. I do all of my measurements by parts, not by specific quantities. So you can measure this in cups or grams, you do by weight, you can do it by gallon, however you'd like. But essentially in the mix, when we put this together, you're gonna do three parts of your soy flour to one part of your brewer's yeast, one part of your milk powder, one part of your gluten, and then for approximately every six cups of the mixture that you have, you're gonna want a teaspoon of the crushed vitamin C powder. So it is that easy. We're just gonna mix this up really quickly, you guys. Um, if you are going to mix this and store it, put it in something airtight. If I make big batches of this, I will put it in a food safe bucket um, that is airtight and store it in a really cool, dark, dry place. Um, I'm not going to make a big quantity just because I'm doing a video today, so I will put it into a Ziploc bag. So like I said, we will do three parts of our soy flour into the bag. I think a lot of recipes tell you to put this into a bowl and mix it, but I don't think that's necessary. Can if you want. We'll put it right into the bag. So three parts of the soy flour so three cups of that will do a cup of the brewer's yeast this is what gives pollen patties their kind of orangish brownish color so you can see the color of the yeast there it's a third of a cup so we'll do one cup of the yeast One cup of the milk powder. And we'll do a cup of the vital wheat gluten. Looking up, kiwis up on my roof up here. And then I just add in my teaspoon of my crushed vitamin C powder. And then just give this a shake. Kind of mix this all together. And like I said, keep this stored in a cool, dry place. Get all the air out of this. Once you have this done, this substitute you is ready to be given to the bees, fed to the bees. You can feed this dry or you can make it into pollen patties. And if you are curious on how I do that, I will link the video that I made to how I make my pollen patties down below. I do kind of a combination. Sometimes I feed them dry. Sometimes I do the patties. It depends on the time of year, how the small hive beetles are doing. Um, but. Um, that's, yeah, that's about it. That's how easy it is to make this stuff, you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. If you make your own and you use a different recipe, I would love to hear about that. I think next year I'm probably going to try to experiment with some different ingredients, different flours, and kind of see what I can come up with. So I'm very curious on what you guys use. Um, as always, you guys, if you found this video helpful, give it a like. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.